Hello, hello. Wait, let me get this fucking garbage out of here. That's better. All right, so today I'm gonna do just a short little video. I'm gonna go over some troubleshooting steps for a Game Boy Pocket like you see here in the case that you have no power. So this one was sent to me by someone who was trying to mod it. You can see that there is an IPS um, screen kit installed here, but at any rate, uh, it no longer turns on, whereas it did before. So we can see that flick the power switch, no video, no uh, little power LED there. So something is clearly afoot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack this open, we're gonna take a look at the board, and I'm going to walk through what I would do to diagnose and fix this sort of problem. Okay, so now that the motherboard is removed from the shell, we can kind of start taking a look at things. So looking around the board, you know, everything looks, you know, not too bad. There's a little blob of solder um, on pin one of the power switch there, probably where they were trying to wire power into the screen kit uh, via the ribbon. Um, but no bridging, nothing like that. Uh, but the context for when I received this was that the screen was installed it was uh, tested with the, the Game Boy taken apart, it worked fine, and then when it was put back together, suddenly there was no power. There was no power LED, there was no uh, image on the screen, there was no sound, there was no nothing, basically no signs of life. And originally, they've been removed now, but there were some wires, specifically the power wire that was leading to the uh, screen kit, had a large stripped section uh, so you can kind of imagine just bare wire from here, like all along here, uh, which is far too much. With uh, wiring like that, you want to make sure that like you have as little stripped as possible, as little exposed copper to prevent shorts. So where am I going with this? My idea is that there was a short when this was put back together, that piece of wire was pushed somewhere against the motherboard, and that in all likelihood popped a fuse. Um, so on the Game Boy Pocket, there are several different arrangements. Some have two fuses, some have one fuse. Uh, in this case, we have a single fuse down here, labeled F1. And so what we're gonna do to corroborate this hypothesis is we're going to take out our multimeter, like so. We're gonna put it into continuity mode. All right, let me test. All right, so that's good. And so what you want to do to test uh, if a fuse is good is um, check if there is continuity from one term terminal to the next. So fuses aren't meant to impede the flow of power. They're simply meant to pop if the, uh, the current is higher than the design requirements. Um, so ideally, if it's in a, in a good state, then if we touch these two uh, to the terminals of the fuse, we'll get a beep. But in this case, we do not. I can kind of poke these all over, and you can see that we do not have continuity through this fuse, so it is gonzo. So luckily, this is actually a pretty simple fix. Uh, what we're gonna do is take this donor pocket right here, uh, slightly different arrangement, but it still has the fuse right here, just as the other one does. Uh, and we're gonna check real quick with our meter. Yeah, so we get a beep. So this fuse is still good. Now, normally donors are unworking consoles, but this one I think is actually perfectly fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. But the Game Boy Pocket is the worst Game Boy, so, you know, who cares? Anyway, so what we're gonna do is get our iron, our soldering iron turned on, and we're gonna have a handy little solder sucker at hand here. Just wait for the iron to heat up. And so what we're gonna do is, on the other side here, you can see that we have the uh, other sides for the fuse, so the two terminals poke through to the other side of the board. And we're gonna use our solder sucker to just pull up that solder and desolder this from the board. So, got my iron here, touch it to the joint, wait for it to get nice and molten, you'll, you'll either see it or feel it. Bring the sucker in, press the button, boom. Uh, that looks like that was pretty good. We got a little poo there. And let's do the other leg. So bring it in, 
Yep, fill that go in. Suck. And now we can ex inspect. Those look fairly cleaned out. I don't think we're gonna have too much of an issue pulling those out of the board at this point. So let's go ahead and see here. Get my tweezers and yeah, so that just kind of broke free quite cleanly there. So we're gonna put that off to the side. We're gonna remember that that's a good fuse. And this is the garbage motherboard because it's a pocket. Bring in the dead board and we're gonna do the same thing. So we are going to, and I think for safety, what I'm gonna do here is because these solder points are so close to the button contacts, and this is obviously the game way that we're trying to save here. You know, we're gonna take a little bit of Kapton tape and we're gonna put it just right over the battery contacts over there. You really do not ever wanna get solder on battery contacts because these are gold plated, that that is done for both corrosion resistance, but also for uh, resistance to oxidation so that the little carbon contacts on the membranes can create the circuit properly. If you get any solder on there, that oxidizes very readily and that's permanent. That cannot be removed. You're gonna have unresponsive buttons for basically the rest of forever. So you wanna avoid that as much as possible. So again, we're gonna come in with the iron. We'll do this leg first, just for fun. Suck that up, that looks good. Do it with the other one. All right, that one's being a little stubborn, but suck that up, that looks fine. All right, same thing. Flip the board over. We will kind of wiggle this out. And there it is. That one's into the garbage. We don't need that one anymore. Okay, uh, and now it's just the reverse. So we take the good fuse. Doesn't matter what way you put these in, unlike, you know, like uh, an electrolytic capacitor, for example, these are not uh, polarized. So just like a resistor, they can go uh, any way around that you choose as long as you put them in the original holes. Um, and then, let me see, this is a bit stubborn, but let's see if we can get that in. All right, that is seated nicely. And yeah, that should stay just fine. Oh, nope, I was wrong. I was wrong. There we go. Uh, so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna get my Kapton tape back real quick. Gonna cut off just a little section here. And we will, I do believe I left my little piece of tape behind. There we go, that's better. So we're just gonna take a little bit of Kapton tape and put it over there just to hold it in place. We'll, we'll take that off once we're done here. So flip the board over, pull out your soldering iron, make sure it's up to heat, up to temperature rather. Uh, I have my favorite Kester 6337 solder here. Uh, I strongly believe that leaded solder is the best. And, you know, a lot of people are afraid of it because they're afraid they're going to breathe in lead. That's not really how it works. Flux fumes are what you have to worry about, but that is what I crave. So bring the iron into the pad, feed in some solder. Boom. Beautiful, clean joint. Going to flip it around. We're going to do the other pad here, the other leg. Again, into the pad, feed in some solder, just a couple seconds, in and out, as quick as you can manage it. All right, so let us, let's pull off this capped on tape right here, we'll flip it over, we're gonna pull capped on tape off there. So you can see, you know, the solder flooded through the uh, through holes there. Hopefully you can see that, so we got a nice solid connection at this point. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our continuity test again. We're just gonna make sure that like, we didn't blow this thing up in the process of removing it from one Game Boy and putting it in another one. So two, uh, two terminals of your multimeter, one to one terminal of the fuse, one to the other, we get a beep. So that is all good. Now, one of the things that you wanna watch out for is um, whenever you're doing this sort of power troubleshooting is what was the actual cause? Uh, in this case, we're fairly certain that it was this rogue wire that shorted something up here um, and ended up blowing the fuse. So, you know, in this case, it's unlikely that 
Um, there's a short anywhere else, but just to be safe, what we're going to do is we're going to poke down on these power uh, DC regulator pins down here. So uh, the one on the top right here is VCC, so that's going to be um, positive battery, at least when the switch is turned on. Uh, this bottom right one is going to be ground. This top left is going to be uh, 5 volts, which is the main uh, voltage supply for the, the system. So common shorts that you might see that would end up doing this, like blowing a fuse, would be between either VCC and ground or 5 volts and ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to test both. So I'm going to put my red terminal on VCC, black terminal on ground. So you can see no beep, no short. That's a good sign. And then we're going to check as well from 5 volts to ground. No beep. So we're fairly confident here uh, that we do not have any shorts, which is good news. Uh, so I think we can actually safely test this out and see if it works. So uh, I have a benchtop power supply, uh, but I think you know most people don't. Um, a benchtop power supply is what I would generally use to test this. So we set it to three volts, you know, connect my little leads to the battery terminals here and test. Uh, like I said, most people probably don't have those. So what you can do if you're doing this sort of, you know, out of shell testing or not fully assembled testing is to just put the motherboard in the back half of the shell. Uh, let's make sure this is, yeah, that's switched off. And then just put your batteries in just like normal. Cool. Oh, and it looks like the switch was already on. There it is. So you can see we have the power LED. We got the, the little ding from the speaker. So thankfully, this Game Boy is now good um, in theory. I haven't actually reinstalled the screen kit, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll do one final test just to make sure everything is good. Gonna pause right here just to show Tiny little section of stripped wire. No need for like inches and inches of stripped wire. Just a little bit, a little as possible. Gonna come back for a second here just to show how I would connect up the power wire on this screen kit here. Let's see, and I do believe it is the, the older funny playing kit prior to switching to a uh, black ribbon. Um, I'm just going to strip a little bit off there, not too much. Get rid of our excess. Now the official instructions for these kits generally tell you to solder to pin one on the power switch, which is actually not ideal because pin one is always going to receive power, which, you know, even when the system is off, which, you know, probably isn't technically wrong or anything. I would imagine that the the screen driver board has some sort of protection for that, you know, maybe some kind of MOSFET switch or something uh, that checks to make sure that the system itself is on prior to delivering power to anything. But um, the preferred way is actually to wire to pin C, which is common. So that one is going to be um, either connected to the drain resistor through ground when it's off, or it's going to be connected to VCC when the switch is on. So the more you know. There we go. Nice. Let's get it put back together. Moment of truth. There it is. So this isn't totally done. I have to install the, the touch sensor still, but this Game Boy, as far as I can tell, let's grab a cartridge here, is fully fixed, except for the fact that it's a goddamn Game Boy Pocket. See y'all later.